with respect to uh, the ceasefire agreement, obviously we are hopeful, but based on past experience, also skeptical uh, that, uh, in fact, the separatists will follow through and the Russians will stop violating Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. So it has to be tested. Uh, and I know that the Europeans uh, are discussing uh, at this point the final sh It is going to take a, some time to implement. Uh, and as a consequence, for us to move forward based on what is currently happening on the ground with sanctions, uh, while acknowledging that if, in fact, the elements of the plan that has been signed are implemented, then those sanctions could be lifted, uh, is a more likely way uh, for us to ensure that uh, there's follow through. Uh, but that's something that uh, obviously uh, we'll consult closely with our European partners uh, to determine. Uh, I do want to point out, though, uh, that the only reason that we're seeing this ceasefire at this moment is because of both the sanctions that have already been applied and the threat of further sanctions, which are having a real impact on the Russian economy. Uh, and have isolated Russia in a way that we have not seen in a very long time. Uh, the path for Russia to rejoin the community of nations that respects international law is still there. Uh, and we encourage President Putin to take it. Uh, but the unity and the firmness that we've seen in the transatlantic alliance in supporting Ukraine uh, and applying sanctions uh, has been, uh, I think, a testimony to how seriously people take the basic principle that uh, big countries can't uh, just stomp on little countries or force them uh, to change their policies uh, and, and uh, give up their sovereignty. So uh, I, I'm very uh, pleased with the kind of work that's been done throughout this crisis in Ukraine, uh, and uh, I think U.S. leadership has been critical uh, throughout that process.